Hey, Tanner James, welcome back to the Peak Period Podcast. We have an awesome DJ on today, Justin Kanoya, and he is from San Diego, and he's going to be dropping a lot of awesome, awesome tips uh, about websites and using social media to your advantage and how to use it properly and all that kind of stuff. So it's an awesome podcast, so it'll, it'll definitely help you a ton, and I will catch you when we are done with the podcast. All right, so we have Justin here. He's from San Diego, and he is going to give you guys some advice, and we're just going to talk over some tips about how to grow your business. Uh, he does have some awesome DJ blogs that you can jump on and read, and I'm going to reference a few of them here because they he has some really, really good information. So uh, thank you, Justin, for jumping on today. Thanks for having me, Tanner. Yeah. So, you know, I um, I knew you needed to get on here. I ended up going on your website and I absolutely loved it. Super, super nice. Um, looks great. And I don't know how you designed it, but it is really, really pleasant. Um, like going through it, it's probably one of the best DJ websites I've ever seen, ever. Well, I, I appreciate that. It was um, something. So I, I, you know, I've been DJing God, probably for 25 years, but I really got serious about it here in San Diego back in 2002. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it it was May, 2015 that I actually quit, quit my day job and I've been DJing full time, Mm -hmm. um, for the past, you know, two and a half years or so. And one of my main goals, cause my, you know, my site, I think I'd set it up back in 2002 and really maybe made, I probably could count on one hand how many times I actually updated it during Mm -hmm. the next like 13 Uh years. Um, and I knew that was one of the things I needed to to really focus Mm -hmm. on was, was redoing it. Um, helping properly brand it and everything. And, mm-hmm. you know, I spent, um, really the, the, that summer of 2015, um, building content, um, actually researching some different things and finally, uh, launching it back in, I think it was around late August mm-hmm. uh, of that year. Um, and yeah, I, <laughs> so kind of the secret is, I mean, I'm using Squarespace. So that was one of the things that actually made it much easier mm-hmm to have a very good looking site. There's so many resources out there with whether it's um, WordPress or Squarespace or Wix, mm-hmm. um, a lot of well-designed templates. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, you have to kind of understand how they all work and how, right. how you can get them to work for you. Um, but, but once I kind of understood that and um, I, you know, I think also just realizing that not everything like not every single page had to be populated right off the get-go like it's Mm going to take some time to to get content developed um but sort of have that end in mind and then as the months go on and you're developing content then start launching pages so it started out kind of small but now it's gotten to be pretty Mm -hmm. robust and and in some ways it's kind of fun to to work Mm -hmm. with it and update it and so yeah Yeah. And, um, I, I think what some DJs do, I, I kind of see it fading out, which is a good thing, but what they would do is they would have a website and then it would like, um, direct to their Facebook page. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's like, it's not that much per month to, to get the, to get the, um, what is it? Hosting and yeah. the builder, the website builder and, and do that. You know, it takes time and you do have to update it, but if you're, if you make it, you can update it yourself. So then yeah. you get a cool picture from Saturday night and Sunday it's on your website, you know, so that is the nice thing about doing it. But I, I think when it goes to your Facebook page, it makes you look almost unprofessional. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the thought behind that was, oh, well, I, I'm updating Facebook all the time uh-huh. or, and, and plus it's just, it's easy. Like right. in some ways it is much easier to update mm-hmm. a, a Facebook page than it is your website. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's when we get into, you know, different pieces of your online presence, Mm -hmm. your social media presence really have different, uh, consumers, different customers. And the type of content you have on Facebook isn't necessarily the type of content that's on your website or on Twitter or on Instagram. So, um, and it, it doesn't mean that you have to invest in every piece of social media or every piece Mm -hmm. of online content on there, but what you are doing, what one or two pieces you are deciding to Mm -hmm. really concentrate on like do it really well Mm -hmm. um and and what are other how are other people using that Mm -hmm. um but you're right i mean it it does it just seems kind of like a lazy thing to do because you can um buy a domain and then just have that link to somewhere else which oh yeah i'll just link it to my facebook Mm -hmm. business page because i update that and it's and it's super easy um just spend some time 
Mm-hmm. And even for me, it was, I, I mean, I, I actually, the reason I'm on Squarespace is because I remember that year watching the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. <laughs> $2 million ads actually pay off, I guess. Right, right, right. Um, but I was watching, and I was watching the Super Bowl and, you know, they were, the Squarespace ad was on there. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, that's really cool. And I knew I needed need to redo mm-hmm. my site. And so I looked into it and, and it was super easy, but it wasn't, it wasn't just like then in January that I'm okay, I'm going to redo it. Right. Um, you know, I spent time looking and seeing what other DJ sites look like. What do mm-hmm. other, other wedding vendor sites, photographers, coordinators, like what are their sites look like? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and how am I going to, you know, build that and, and, and really make, make it look good and yeah. make it reflective of, of what I'm doing and what my business is doing. Um, because what's on Facebook is completely is completely different. I mean, it's fine to take a blog post and post it on your Facebook page, but mm-hmm. that shouldn't be what right. what it's all about. Right. And people are on Facebook. I think that's kind of the other thing. Like, oh, Facebook wouldn't work for me because, you know, people aren't. No, they're on it. Yeah. They're on it. And you need to, I, I think you kind of need to optimize everything and get everything looking nice. Even if you're not going to go super hard on it, you know, Absolutely. have it look nice. Have the page, have a good cover photo in the back that looks nice. You know, that kind of thing. Keep it looking nice. Keep your bio in there. All that kind of stuff. Have it linked to your website. I, I it It's so true. I mean, just put the minimal effort. Right. Um, even... Even if face, even if you're gonna put, even if Facebook is gonna be the priority over your website, or maybe mm-hmm. it's Yelp and that's your priority. Right. I mean, I I find this with restaurants a lot, um, because restaurants, you know, they don't necessarily have marketing staffs, mm-hmm. um, and because they're just they're so concentrated on just on their customers and like producing great food and all that. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking about like the really like the small mom and pop sites, obviously like the big restaurants. Um, you know, they've got fully developed right. websites, but right. I've gone on Yelp trying to find a cool place to eat and I'm thinking, oh, this sounds kind of cool. I mm-hmm. heard about this and it's a small little spot. Um, and I'm wanting to just click through the website and they, they don't have one or it just mm-hmm. goes to like open table or something. Yeah. And it's, and it's really frustrating. And right. I'm, and I'm, and, and part of it's like, well, I'm sure like they don't like, we don't have time to do it and we get tons of customers mm-hmm. anyway, but right. flexion on you know, how much effort you're putting into just sort of reaching out to your customers and just providing the information that they want when it's just like, I just want to see mm-hmm. like, what's on your, like, what does your menu look like? What is your pricing? Right. Um, you know, owner, what I mean, I just, just want to check it like, out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, tell me a story about your, the owners right, because it's right. a family run business. You know, I'd like to know more about that. Um, and, and that to me, like, I'm, I don't need a full on website, but just, so, just the bare minimum right. that shows you're putting effort into it. Right. Uh, makes sense. And so as DJs, it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're showing that you're just, you're putting the effort into different areas, but once, but guide them to the place you really want them mm-hmm. to go to, which might be your website. It might be Facebook. It might be Instagram. Mm-hmm. But when you get the customer there, really show them like, this is what I do. And mm-hmm. this is why I'm really putting my effort into it. This is why I'm charging twice as much as the other guy right. that you think that you're just going to go with because he's cheaper. Um, I'm putting a lot of effort into mm-hmm. this and, 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 and that's why, that's why I'm charging what I'm charging. Right. And, and that's why your event's going to be much better with me because I really care about mm-hmm. what I'm doing. So, so if, if DJs are upset with um, getting not necessarily undercut, because I think of undercutting is like, somebody's like, Oh, how much are you? Oh, yeah. you're 800. I'm going to come in at 600. Yeah. I think that is very rare. I think it's more like I'm 800. Oh, I'm 400. And then they go with the 400. Right. And that's not really right. undercutting. That's just, they have messed up pricing. Yeah. So if you are dealing with either of them, if you're dealing with cheaper DJs and the client doesn't see the difference between you and that other DJ, you need to show that you're different. So if you both have um, uh, domains that redirect your Facebook page, you're not showing that you're different. You know, you have a really nice uh, uh, website that is optimized for cell phones and mobile devices. You're showing that you're different versus a DJ who doesn't have one. And you're going to attract higher end clients that want to see want to want to learn about you it doesn't have to be super in-depth it doesn't have to be the best website in the world but just you know the basics on there to to know what they're getting into yeah and you have to make it easier for them to i guess get that understanding mm-hmm. so whether that and whether that's a 30 second video or it's a very specific landing page mm-hmm. um don't make anyone try to search for the reason that they should choose you right um, you really need to serve it up to them directly right in their face mm-hmm. right um because otherwise 
they're just going to do the, they're going to, they're going to put the minimal effort into mm-hmm. it. Um, and if they're, if they spend five minutes on your site, they're spending five minutes on the other site and you're, you know, you're charging a thousand for an event and this person's charging 500. They're like, okay, we spent the same amount of time. Okay. It looks like, yeah, they both have pictures. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll just go with the, the cheaper guy. Right. Um, and, and I, I've been in that situation a lot. And I think that's why I'm really making a concerted effort to, to, to really serve that information up mm-hmm. to people because, um, I mean, I, I feel like, it, you know, just recently I've just been in that situation a lot and I've, you know, I've got to f- figure out exactly what it is and what that, you know, what that right formula is to, to get in the information that I really want people to, to mm-hmm. see and right. view. Um, because, you know, in all honesty, I, I, th- there's been a lot of times where I sent a quote, like, it's really interesting because I, I get this great back and forth before I send the pricing. Right. But then after the pricing, it's like nothing. Right. Right. Um, so it's not like, I mean, it'd be one thing if the person was like really hard to reach out to mm-hmm. just to get their, just to get the particulars, but they were super quick. Like they would text me and then we we're emailing like back mm-hmm. and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, but as soon as the pricing and, and you just know, they're like, Oh, I didn't know it was gonna be that much. And people don't like to say no. Right. So they, they, they hope you just kind of right. forget and don't, don't pay attention. So when you follow up, nothing. And then finally, like, look, I just need to know. Right. Right. <laughs> they're like, right. Oh, sorry. Right. Yeah. We decided to go look at our budget better. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, and I'm realizing that like, if, what am I not giving to them? Right. That's easy for them because I mean, I feel like if I could at least have the opportunity to just talk to them, right. Um, but, but I'm the same way. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to meet with every single person that I'm asking for services and you're busy. from. Like, I'm busy. You get busy. The busier yeah. you get, the harder it is. You know, you yeah. can't meet with every single bride. Yeah. And, and then the same thing for them. Like the bride right. can't meet with every single DJ. Right. Right. Um, and so they're just kind of like, okay, well, if I, just who's cheaper and we'll just go with them. Mm-hmm. And, and like, mm-hmm. I'm going to check that box. Right. Um, and that's what I'm really like. I'm it, it, there's, there's a difference I think from like, I need to hire a DJ for my wedding versus I want Tanner. I want Justin mm-hmm. at my mm-hmm. wedding. And that's where I've got to figure out. We've got to figure out how do we get it to the point where it's not just, I need the DJ mm-hmm. versus I want, I want him. I want Justin. Right. I need because, you because, because I've been in, I've been in that situation too, where they're just like, like I, yeah, we just, we want you for our wedding and you send the price and like, they like five minutes later, the contract signed, the deposits already in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are great. Those are your dream right. clients. And that's, right. that's who um, ultimately you want to attract. Mm-hmm. So I feel like right now I'm kind of at that point where I'm, I'm, I'm attracting plenty of people that are coming to the site. Mm-hmm. I've got to get to that next level where I'm right. attracting the people that are like, oh yeah, there it is. Where's the payment? Where's the payment button? And I think the other thing is, especially when you're, you're starting out or trying to grow, you want to book every single client. You want to work with every single possible client that is out there. And the thing is, you won't. You can't. There are just some people that won't be in your budget. They think a DJ is like, you know, 80 bucks for the night at a, yeah. at a house party. And you come in with a decent quote and they're like, oh yeah, no, you know, I, I mean, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. So you can get upset and, and wonder why it didn't work and then lower your prices. But you just kind of have to figure out that it's not going to happen with every single one. Yeah. You know, you brought up an awesome point about the landing pages and you have a, um, a blog article about landing pages. And I really, really liked it. You said you should have multiple landing pages, multiple like website pages, um, and have them. So I like the one from Wedding Wire. So you have a Wedding Wire account. And then what happens is if that bride who's checking out your Wedding Wire account hits it, it takes her to a landing page, not your, not your full website page, a separate landing page that says you're engaged and then goes on with some more text about, because now you know that she's a qualified bride. This right. isn't like you have multiple, you know, a house party or, you know, a corporate event or you do some awesome fitness events or a fitness event or, you know, that kind of thing. You have you have it completely directed at those brides. And I really, really like that. So you do all, yeah, you do all that on Squarespace? Yeah. And I mean, that was just a feature that's just called cover pages where mm-hmm. the initial I mean, I think the thought was like if you just need a like a temporary, so like you're working on your site, but you just need something temporary. Like here's mm-hmm. a really attractive and easy way. I mean, it was, it, it was super simple to, to set up. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you can customize the URL. Um, and I, I think initially I was thinking, cause I was really um, trying to figure out like, how do I direct people to areas that have, 
that are specific to the type of event mm-hmm. they have. Um, because, you know, I, I do weddings, I do mm-hmm. fitness. And actually, that's that's really where it came up. I, I had no intention of DJing fitness events when I was starting out, like, full-time DJing. My, mm-hmm. my goal was to, like, redo my site and just start booking a ton of weddings. Um, the the fitness thing really kind of came out of nowhere and just started to grow and grow and grow. And, and um, I realized, like, what was very reflective, especially on my homepage, was – um was my weddings Mm -hmm. and you know if people were to come to there and now they've got to search like okay well i know he like i saw him at fitness event but where's the information about that Mm -hmm. again this is about all about like making it easier for people to get the information they need and also to to contact you um and i was you know you start thinking about okay like doing a completely separate website um but then i was like i just think this this feature happened to, to come mm-hmm. up and i thought this will this is the way i can i can make this work um and then it started to go to other things like oh yeah i'm on wedding wire if you're on the knot and there's people that are there's always these links mm-hmm. to go to the website even if you're doing a google adwords campaign and that i think that's where it really hit me because I, I think i was watching um just some online tutorial about adwords and how you know one of the biggest mistakes people make is you're you're advertising for a specific product. So, and I think I'd even, um, you know, an example I put is like, if you're searching for a new battery for your GoPro and you type Mm -hmm. in GoPro battery and the Google AdWords come up on the side and you click on that first link and it just goes to a page about, you know, just, just GoPro accessories, but it doesn't Mm -hmm. go to the specific battery page. Now you're asking that customer to search, click to do more work, just to find find it. it. Yeah. Um, and we all know people like, they don't really like to click more than twice right. on your site anyway, and they're they're not going to spend. Right. So they're not going to go back and try to find something else. Um, I started to think the same way, where you know, and I did this experiment. I was I was like searching wedding DJs and just DJs, and mm-hmm. almost 100 percent of them, pretty much, were just going straight to the homepage. So um, what Justin is saying is, if you are going to do any kind of advertising, let's say just for weddings, right? You want to you want to attract some new leads coming in whether it be Google ads or um, or Facebook ads or any kind of advertising, you don't have it go when they click on the ad. You don't have it go directly to the uh, homepage of your website. You're going to want to push them to a uh, wedding page. So, you know, djjustin.com slash weddings is where you're going to push them to, not his main homepage, because his main homepage is fitness events and weddings and private parties and you know whatever else he may put on there yeah not to mention like there's there's my recent blog post there's right. the navigation bar at the front i mean it's just like any other home page uh-huh. pictures with, maybe videos with, like that kind of stuff yeah yeah but with landing pages um it's just one really beautiful photo that i was like oh this is really cool mm-hmm. and this like look she's having a great time at her wedding mm-hmm. um and i was very specific about the links like i want people to, to see my wedding blogs mm-hmm. posts um, and then, you know, request for information. So I think there's really just two options to go yeah. to. And those options then go into my website, mm-hmm. just the regular page, you know, regular contact us page. Um, and now that they're into it, but that's, you know, if they don't want to, if they just want to contact me, I'm just making it super easy. Right. Um, there is that step further. You know, I mentioned if I, I had set up, I basically had set up an area and it's basically a hidden area on the site. Actually, no, it's not. Cause it's all my weddings, but, um, by properly tagging my all my wedding blog posts, it all filters into a specific page. So that's okay. another thing too. Like with my blog, and and many other people, you can just go to a, someone's blog page, and it's just in chronological order of all the mm-hmm. blog posts they've ever done. Um, for me, someone that does a multiple, you know, different types of events, you know, maybe my last five blog posts were like a wedding, two corporate events, and two fitness events, mm-hmm. and that's all people are seeing and they're like, Oh, well, what about like, I thought he did more wedding work and mm-hmm. all there's that's just because of what right. the time, the day right. they happen right. to, to right. click on there, there's like only one wedding showing, mm-hmm. but by filtering all of my wedding posts and putting that on a completely separate page, um, that's where I'm directing them to. And they just see, you know, mm-hmm. 30 blog posts of, of weddings, mm-hmm. which may, you know, be for the entire year, but it's, it's like, Oh cool. Yeah. Look at all these weddings he's done. Mm-hmm. And all this is like, you know, it's all, done in the background i mean literally by just um right tagging at weddings and and set list um i've set set that page up to only display those things mm-hmm. so those are the kind of things that you know i guess it's kind of like you know don't work harder work smarter that cliche mm-hmm. um there are features that are probably in your content management system that will help you um 
work smarter, mm-hmm. but also just work and look more professional right. um, and quantify your clients and get them to the page, to the areas that they want to in a super easy way, mm-hmm. which of course, in the end, they're like, wow, he did all this cool stuff. Site looks great. It was super easy to contact you. Mm-hmm. You've been responsive. Right. Um, we'd love to meet with you or we'd love to book you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. So, so you do some, some cool yoga and fitness events for some pretty big name clients. Yes. Um, Fitbit, Lululemon, Core Power, and then mm-hmm. some of the um, some of the gyms nearby, right? Yeah, the yoga yeah. gyms. And and as I'm, you know, as I mentioned, I, I had no idea I was going to get get into that. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, November 2015, so just a couple of months into like your full time, yeah, yeah, going in full time. Um, and actually, even before that, I, I had actually sat down the day after I quit my job. I sat in a coffee shop. And I started writing um, this blog post. And what it was was actually, a, it was an open thank you letter to Lululemon because they were really it kind of inspired me to, to ultimately quit my job. Mm-hmm. I had been work, I've been working out um, for about the last year with what's just some different workout groups. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just happened. And one of them was a Lululemon run club. And I started to just get to know some of the people that worked at Lululemon here locally in San Diego. Um, and January of that year, uh, they asked me to play in their store, and I, I DJed in the store a few times, uh, you know, leading up to, to I guess May or s- somewhere in there. And it was kind of during that time, and I was like meeting yoga instructors that had like quit their corporate wellness job mm-hmm. and just like for yoga, you know, teaching yoga full time, and just just the whole corporate culture of Lululemon is to really set goals and to mm-hmm. really follow the dreams and the goals that mm-hmm. you really have. Um, and so, you know, the long story short is it really kind of inspired me to, to, to do that and really make that huge mm-hmm. uh, decision and leap in my life. So I sat down and I wrote this letter and and it was all about what, you know, pretty much what I just said. And I posted that in August, right, because mm-hmm. it was May that I wrote that, but I didn't have a, I really didn't have a website to post it to yet. Um, so I, I just kind of sat on it for the next few months and I posted it on a Thursday in August and within 48 hours, mm-hmm. 12, over 12,000 people had been to my website because it just kind of caught wind, not only locally, because <laughs> um, I, I sent it to like my friend that was a manager of the store mm-hmm. in San Diego. And then of course she just passed it on. Right, and then it right. totally went viral, not um, throughout the company, but then just other people like, right. you know, someone that worked at Lululemon in Vancouver, like shared it on their Facebook right, and some right. of their friends that didn't even work there. So it just got passed around. That is super cool. Saturday morning, I get a call from the corporate office in Vancouver just saying you know this came across our desk and you know we're thank you very much we're just super inspired and just like really just so great with what you did and we're actually planning a, a big event our managers conference uh, in Vancouver in October and we need a DJ and we'd love to fly up to Vancouver and have you DJ that is DJ. awesome yeah um, and that's kind of where it started and and so it still wasn't a fitness manager like a fitness company and uh-huh. so I we went and we did their conference it was like a thousand uh, Lululemon, you know, managers and executives and mm-hmm. just DJ throughout the week. Um, that was in October of 2015, November of 2015, my friend who actually met through Lululemon became a, uh, a fit Fitbit ambassador here mm-hmm. in San Diego. And they were kicking off this program where they were going to, um, gather Fitbit users once a month, either go on a run or mm-hmm. just do a, you know, a short little workout. And the kickoff event was going to be, uh, like a workout and a yoga session um, here in San Diego, and they needed a DJ. Mm-hmm. So she was like, "Oh, my friend, you know, he, he you know, he's a DJ, he's mm-hmm. full time, and he actually just did something for Lululemon." And they're like, "Oh yeah, cool, we can have him do that." Mm-hmm. Um, and so I DJ the the Fitbit local event here in San Diego, and then about a month later, they did the same kickoff in San Francisco. So they called me and like, "Oh, can you do the San Francisco event?" And then that's kind of where it all started from there. Mm-hmm. Um, that like in January, they're like, Hey, are you available in February? Like February mm-hmm. 3rd or whatever. It was. Right. 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 Like, yeah, I am like, okay, well we've got an event in New York. We can't really tell you about it, but, um, just <laughs> want to know if you're available. And like, so I ended up, I was going, I went to New York to uh-huh. DJ the, um, launch of their new Fitbit product, which was, you know, February, 2016, mm-hmm, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and just did, a, you know, I ended up doing a bunch of stuff for the company, you know, the same kickoff in Seattle and LA, mm-hmm. Um, and I went through two different product launches with them. Um, and part of where I'm kind of all going with this, the reason that I kept getting this is because 
I mean, for one, I was available, but I think because I was like, I mean, ultimately you got to do a great job, right? Mm -hmm. But not only did I present myself, I feel like professionally at the event, mm -hmm. but just the fact that I was answering emails, I was being cooperative mm -hmm. and you know, contributing to, to their with. event. It wasn't just like, oh, you available? Okay, cool. And we need you like, like during this amount of time, like I was asking questions, like tell me more about the event. Like mm -hmm. how can I add more value to right. it? Um, versus, you know, getting a, an inquiry and not responding mm -hmm. for a few days or whatever, because, um, I mean that, especially when it comes to corporate clients, I mean, so many of them are, are, are planning on such tight timelines. Right. I mean, a couple of them, um, I, I don't think they had their details really solidified until like two or three weeks before. Mm -hmm. So they really, it was more of, it was easier to ask if I was available and fly me to New York than for them to take Fine. a chance yeah. Yeah. of finding a DJ in New York that would represent themselves professionally and be available yeah. and all that. They had worked with me before and they're just like, oh, if he's available, let's just do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, ultimately it probably cost them more money because they got to right. fly me out and do all that, but it was just easier. And I think you'll find that, you know, it's kind of the theme from what we we're saying earlier. Mm -hmm. If you make it easier on your clients and your, or your potential clients to reach out to you, mm -hmm. uh, get the information that they need, they're likely going to book you. Right. I mean, I, I can't emphasize enough how that translates to the corporate world because some of them, they're totally. just willing to pay whatever it takes, especially if you can make it quick and easy for them because it's so it's a reflective on them to their boss mm -hmm. that like, oh, like you just such a great job running the event. Like if you can make your client look good because they're because that totally. client is actually looking great to their boss because their boss is looking good to their boss. And, right, right, know, right. And, and if you want to deal with corporate events, you got to be professional. I mean, there, there is no way around it. You need to step it up. If, if you tr are trying to get them and you don't know why you're not getting them, you know, I, I, I yeah. would say that's probably what it is. It's not that you're priced too high. It's that they don't they don't want to deal with flaky DJs. That's the yeah. last thing they want to do. So, you and know, I don't know, and, and just real quick on that, I don't, I'm trying to think of just like any other service provider where you do have that wide range of like professionalism to... Mm -hmm just the bedroom right. guy that 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 is a dj still a dj and probably still loves the, the culture uh -huh. of djing but it's just so different i mean it, i mean i'm and I've, I've got friends that are just like they, they, they could never dj a wedding just because mm -hmm. it's not even a lack of professionalism but like they would never even know how to entertain like mm -hmm. the idea of having to get on a microphone in front of mm -hmm. 200 people and just welcome them mm -hmm. um and that's really what separates great right. wedding MCs, great wedding DJs from from others. Because I feel like you you are very reflective of of the event, whether it's a wedding, whether it's a mm -hmm. product launch for a huge uh, fitness and technology company, mm -hmm. um, or you know just a, uh, an apparel company. Mm -hmm. um, you're really you, in some ways you're kind of representing the company, even though you're just like you a totally hired are, vendor. yeah. Um, but you know, they, they've got to have people that they trust and that people are going to be as professional as they would. Right. Right. Doing it. So when you were talking, when you, when you said that story about, um, going from Lululemon to Fitbit, what, what, what I took away from that story is you never know who's watching. Like you Absolutely. never know where this event could lead. So you could be dealing with a client and it could be the worst client, right? I think we've all had those clients that they are just not like you, you got into it and you almost like want to like, you just want the event to be over, right? It's yeah. just like, they're problematic. It's this, it's that, whatever. And so like once it's over, but if you let that, um, um, alter your performance and hinder it, you never know who's there, who is looking to get married or yeah. who is the branch manager at AT&T and needs a DJ for the yeah. corporate event. You never know. So it's kind of like, you just got to like fake it get through it, have an awesome performance, right? I mean, you just yeah. got to, and you got to be professional at all times. Well, and that's the idea too. I mean, there's always like the debate ever comes every, every now and then like, oh, do you have a beer? Or do you drink it while, yep, while totally. you're at your wedding? And some people are like, well, like absolutely not. And others like, well, you know, when it's my friend's wedding, like, yeah, like why mm -hmm. not indulge? Or, mm -hmm. or when the groom is super insi in, 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 insistent, but it really is like, you never know who's watching. And for mm -hmm. the most part, no one would care, but there might be that one person that, that thought, oh, mm -hmm. like, I'm going to hire this guy. And the moment he came up to, to like, get your information, like, you're taking shots. Right, like, oh, right, wait, hang right, on. Right. No, I guess I'm not going to talk to him because right. I don't want that at my event. Um, and it, 
it really does go back. I mean, I, I, like I said, I had no intention of, of getting to, I didn't even set those as goals. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and I think that's one of the things too. It's like, it's one thing to like set a really high lofty goal, mm-hmm. but I think ultimately what really makes sense is like, just do a really great job. Mm-hmm. Um, invest everything you can and all your energy into, um, presenting yourself as a professional Mm -hmm. and you don't really, you really don't know who's watching and what it's going to lead to because this really all stemmed from me showing up to a run club where I didn't know anybody Mm -hmm. back in like 2014. And I just got to know the people around me and they kind Mm -hmm. of heard that I DJed. So they kind of invited me to this. And yeah, I mean, not only did it lead to getting to travel and, and, and Mm -hmm. do these big events for these companies, but I mean, there's, there's probably been, half a dozen weddings that I've booked from people that mm-hmm. I've just met with in that circle. Actually, it's yeah. probably even more than that. Um, and you know, yeah, it's, it's about not knowing who's there, but you know, the thing too is, is to not hide the fact, you know, that you're, you're a DJ or mm-hmm. the, whatever, whatever you do. I mean, I think sometimes people um, feel like they, they're almost kind of, I don't know, getting a big head or just showing off like, Oh yeah, I DJ like constantly like, telling uh-huh. people like, uh-huh. this is what I do. But I mean, I don't think you should pepper people with it, but at least let people know. Right. I think that was part of my issue. Like, so working full time, it's like, well, like, who am I really? Like, am I, right. am I this marketing right. person that works here or uh-huh. am I actually a DJ? Um, but if you don't let people know what you do mm-hmm. and, and how will they ever know to, to call and if they don't know you, yeah. They got a wedding. yeah, right. If they don't know you, they so. can't. And, 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 and yeah, I think telling people. I, I think what, what I see a lot is DJs who aren't super professional telling everybody how great of a DJ they are. And it's like, oh, yeah, I'm a yeah. DJ. I do this. And, I do this. and it's like, okay. So I think that's why people don't want to be associated kind of like with that DJ. But I think if you are professional and you aren't like, you know, telling every single person that you meet right off the bat, like, yeah, I'm a DJ, then people know that you're kind of like the real deal. You're not, yeah. you're not messing around. It in, in, in some ways, it's kind of like how I build a dance floor. Like, I don't necessarily like have to use like crutch songs or i mean uh-huh. people are like oh you should just play this because that's what everyone dances to right you kind of let the music speak for itself and let it build on its own so i think kind of in the way i approach marketing myself is i just do a really good job on curating the content that mm-hmm. i have and spending time on it and then and then launching it and then letting the right people see it so then they inquire with me mm-hmm. um, you know one of the things i i had blogged about also is um, when we talk about that Instagram story is that, and the reason I wrote that blog is that someone had actually booked me because they saw me on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and it was, you know, super important for her. I mean, at least from, from my standpoint that when she went to my Instagram feed, that it actually had everything about right. me as a DJ, it had nothing mm-hmm. to do about me as a dad or, right. um, someone that likes to run half marathons because if, Again, if you have to, like, person just trying to get a, a glimpse of who you are mm-hmm. and, like, oh, do, what kind of events you DJ, if, you know, 20 of your last Instagram posts, like, only three of them have you DJing and everything else has nothing to do with DJing, they're, they're like, oh, okay, I mean, that, maybe he's not really He's not doing it that DJ. much. Yeah. When I actually, when I am. And there's plenty. Right. Of, no, yeah. So many DJs, a lot of people that are probably listening right now that have one Instagram account, and they, but they mm-hmm. put stuff from the Saturday's wedding is like basically every seven days, there's like a ton of wedding stuff. Uh-huh. And then the next few days is like stuff that, right. you know, what they had for dinner and you know, what their kid dressed up for Halloween. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, that's a whole nother topic. We'll have to do another uh-huh. podcast on that. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, I mean, you're, you, again, you need to serve up the type of information, the type of content that people are truly looking for. Mm-hmm. And in the case of us as DJs, nobody cares about anything else we're doing except what you potentially right. could be bringing to my event. Mm-hmm. wedding birthday party whatever mm-hmm. so so you actually have a, an awesome another another blog article um about five tips for instagram yeah and the first one was yeah have a separate account have a have a dedicated account for your dj um business and then um, the second one was high quality relevant relevant posts yes um and, and yeah same kind of thing nice and good timely <laughs> timely yes uh and, and i think having a nice camera to take good photos is a big plus you know um because that's kind of where we are, we're at we want to see the high quality we want it looks nicer and so you don't have to go out and spend hundreds of dollars but you know getting a nice camera or using your cell phone and actually kind of 
using it correctly instead of just taking it and having it be blurry and dark where they can't see yeah. anything, you know, that, that definitely helps. Well, and at this point, I mean, you know, most camera phones are just as good as, mm-hmm. as mid-level point and shoot cameras. Mm-hmm. Um, and because of the nature of Instagram and the size of it, like mm-hmm. you're not blowing the picture up really huge. So right. you're, the camera on your phone is completely fine. Mm-hmm. What really it gets into, and I think I, I might have mentioned in there, like, like go grab a photography book and just get sort of the understanding of like rule of right. thirds and just right. composing a great photo. Um, and also uh, looking into the different photo editing apps that are out there because what I'm seeing, and this kind of goes into uh, not only relevant, but you know what you're posting and how often you're posting it I think too many people get caught up in the idea of, okay, I'm on Instagram. I need to populate it. I need stuff that I'm DJing. Okay, that's great. That's mm-hmm. that's what we want. Mm-hmm. But they're at their event and they take a shot of them setting up. Then they take a shot of them at the ceremony. And then they take a shot like at the first dance. And so, and then whatever, the cake cutting. And there's all these things for one. Like, <laughs> like I, I actually, I can't take that many photos at the event mm-hmm. because I'm so concentrated on what I'm doing. Right, right, right. Um, so for one, are you like, how like how much how much, how much are you uh, working how here focused, yeah. how focused are you on the event and your client but secondly you're not because the thing is too for me like i need to take the photo and i need to really look at it and like edit it and, yeah. and i want yeah. to present it very nicely there's no way you'd have time to do that at the event mm-hmm. um so um and then also in the fact that i i have always felt like i'll take a few shots but then and it's really quick i take it and i put my phone down right. and then i'm taking another one it's not till later Saturday night when I get home or mm-hmm, Sunday mm-hmm. and like looking through stuff like, Oh, like that's the, that's the cool shot from the night. That's one that I'm going to, yeah. that I'm going to use. I'm not post that on Monday or, or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, for one, you know, for one, just the nature, the nature of Instagram as we're scrolling through our feed. Um, if, you know, I follow 600 people and someone has just posted 10 photos right in a way, I, I see their 10 photos. I'm just like, Oh my God, like how yeah. much is, and, and all of them are terrible photos. You start to get turned off by that account and right. that person. Um, and that's how people unfollow you. Right. So, um, and now before it was a little bit difficult, it's like, Oh, I have so much that I want to share. So that's why, mm-hmm. you know, people are doing it now with Instagram stories. I think it's much easier right. because there it's less about quality. It's just, it is about quantity mm-hmm. because I can now choose whether or not I actually want to look at all of the, you know, all the stuff that you post. Mm-hmm. So my formula has always been, you know, take a bunch of shots from the night, really look at what you have and, and, and even, and talk to your, to the photographer. Maybe there's a, right. there's a shot that they took of you that mm-hmm. you can, that you can use. Um, but use Instagram stories throughout the night and, yeah. and just post those really quick because now that's a different type of, of client. There's, that's the person mm-hmm. that's really like, okay, what a cool photo of that. Oh, he does Instagram stories. Let me look at that. And right. they actually see you working and they see how hard you're working. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that that's just another way to, to kind of convert people and get a better understanding of, of, of who you are and, and what, and mm-hmm. what you do. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's kind of my story with Instagram. The other, the other really quick tip I've passed along to people, especially to DJs, you know, as, as a DJ, we we kind of have a vantage point that that really nobody else has right Mm -hmm. whether it's behind our booth um it could be at the ceremony and you're kind of at a certain angle that that people are obviously they're not standing right behind where you're standing Mm -hmm. Um, same thing with like the first dance um and so if you step outside and just like take a picture and just and it just looks like everyone else's photo Mm -hmm. um you're not really doing a great service to yourself because it's like, oh, well, that I mean, that looks like any other bride and groom photo from a mm-hmm. ceremony or from their first dance. So I've always kind of made it a point to to include my gear in mm-hmm. in photos, um, and that's not necessarily all of my posts. But if I'm taking a shot like that, like of the first dance, like I'll just like pan down a little bit and just like get a corner of you know of my turntable, or maybe mm-hmm. I'm using a controller. Maybe there's some cool lights that are are there. Um, that kind of shows the interesting like juxtaposition be- between like being a DJ, but sort of being at this really nice fancy event. Mm-hmm. And again, like no one else is taking that. I mean, the, totally. the friends, they're all on the other side and they're all just taking that same shot where the, you know, the bride and groom mm-hmm. are just standing there and they're dancing. Um, so what is it that you're, that, you know, what are the, what is your perspective that you can provide to the people that are following you that, that others can't because, and I think that's where, um, 
not only do you get potential clients or, or vendors mm -hmm. that might want to follow you, but as a DJ, I'd much rather follow a, an account that has, you know, because we're all like gear geeks. Like mm -hmm. I want to see like what people are using. Mm -hmm. So like I'm more apt to follow an account like right. that um, versus just another DJ that you know, everything is just wedding photos. Like, right. well, I can see that every wedding photographer's account looks like that. Uh -huh. like you're a DJ. So right. let me see you as a wedding DJ or as a special event DJ and how that looks different. Definitely. Yeah, I really like that tip with including your gear in your photos. Um, it it kind of shows that you're working too, because yeah. you could go to three weddings and take pictures of them, but you're not working, you know, like it's just the same picture. So, so yeah, that is cool. I really do like that. Yeah. And then you kind of touched on it. Schedule your posts. Uh, yeah. So, so don't, don't post. So if you have an event on Saturday, don't wait until Wednesday and then post, you know, 12 pictures of it. And I know some DJs yeah, that do that. It, it's horrible. Is... Yeah, well, and even, and also just like don't post on Saturday night because for the most part, people are not on Instagram right, on right. Saturday night. Um, and, you know, people are scrolling, they're looking at their social media while they're at work. So, uh -huh. you know, look at, you know, definitely during the week. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, it also it kind of varies by region. And I don't know how, I don't know how accurate it is, but Instagram does have insights on when mm -hmm. your followers are mostly right. like on. And for the most part, it's like, you know, during the week between like 10 and like two. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, that's, you know, just kind of follow those guidelines. I, I think mm -hmm. you'll notice a difference between when you follow what Instagram or other, um, services are saying that people are on versus if you just randomly do it, especially mm -hmm. if you do it like on a Sunday morning, um, or Saturday, you know, late Saturday night. Um, yeah. So the insights on, um, on Instagram, you have to have a business profile. You have to right. turn it into a business profile, but it is kind of cool to see what's going on and see who's following you from where and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and the advantage is yeah, the business profile, it doesn't cost anything. Mm -hmm. Um, there's other, you can, you can, um, boost posts, mm -hmm. uh, you can have, you know, specific, uh, like links to specific content if you need to mm -hmm. do that. Um, so yeah, for sure. I mean, if you've got a business, it doesn't matter what your business right. is, you might right. as well have a business account. Um, and then, you know, the same thing you know, get that on there. One thing, and I just thought about this, but I always, I've, I've used that ex the example of um, if, you know, you're, you're a DJ and you're like, maybe you're creating a, a new brochure that you're going to give out at a, mm -hmm. at a wedding uh, event or a wedding, um, a bridal show, yep. wedding show. Um, of course, you're going to like, you're, you've got photos of you and of, of you at a wedding or maybe it's of a wedding couple you never see in a brochure a picture of like someone's burrito that they had it's on Saturday right. at, no. <laughs> on the way home from their gig, right? I like it. I so like why it. Why would you why would you put that on your Instagram account? Uh -huh. You know, as your DJ like, oh look at what I had, like like post gig meal. And uh -huh. you snap that and like that's a, that's great on Instagram stories. Like let's right, not put right. on Instagram. But I never because that really is a, just another source of marketing uh -huh. and another source of branding. Mm -hmm. So you would never think to like just randomly put your kid on on your brochure for your wedding services right. or your, a picture of your family uh or maybe you would maybe in an about section but but certainly nothing random like oh like right. i broke a tennis racket today and like look what happened like it looks like the like it looks first like time a back in the gym in a while i'm gonna stick yeah, to it this yeah. time yeah yeah and like a selfie with you in the mirror like why? right 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 <laughs> um so i've always i've kind of that's something i've always told people like what would you put in your marketing materials mm -hmm. what would you not put in your marketing materials right Instagram, Facebook, all those things yeah, are marketing that's... materials. Your website, it's a marketing material. It may not be mm -hmm. a physical piece of paper, mm -hmm. but it is a piece of, you know, it is a marketing tool. Mm -hmm. um, so you should put it with the content that you would normally put on, on your other marketing materials. Right. Awesome. Awesome. That's some awesome knowledge. Uh, so what is your website that people can go for your blogs? I guess I have to create a landing page specifically from your podcast now, right? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, it's a uh, djkanoia.com is just, I mean, that's the main page. Um, I, I'm not even sure what the, the specific blog link is. Um, okay. but the blog link is right up there in the, in the, in the, in the nav bar. Um, but I, I have delineated, like you can click on the blog. Um, and that just, that's just the chronological order of everything. Mm -hmm. But I also have a, a section, and we can link them, I guess, on, I, I'm, this will yeah. be linked, yeah, so we can link it directly from your page, but 
and I've got one menu item that has uh, my set list because mm -hmm. I, um, I that's pretty much how I do most of the blog posts. Is I just grab that whatever I played from the night and I just copy and paste it in, mm -hmm. and do a quick little summary and some photos. Um, and I've broken that out from weddings, fitness and yoga, and then just I guess other special events. Mm -hmm. um, so. A lot of times I don't necessarily even direct people to the main blog because there's just so much. If they're hiring me for a birthday party or right now, like tons of holiday party inquiries. So mm -hmm. I'm just directing them to the special events where I'm like, oh, this is like, right. here's some special events I did or some holiday parties I did last year. And it's very specifically, you know, you can look at the different, these clients, you know, blah, mm -hmm. blah, and they're just there. That way they're not having to, mm -hmm. to weed through everything, In which, I mean, that's a great example, right? I mean, there's, if someone wants to see some holiday parties you did in December, mm -hmm. January of last year or earlier this year, and you just send them to your main blog page and you're like, oh, scroll down all right. the way to January, last December, <laughs> um, you're really doing them a disservice. Just like just right. send them the link and just, you know, right. or send them even better. Like just send them like the three, three blog posts mm -hmm. from like three of the events you did. Like, oh, here's three right. events I holiday parties I did. Yeah. So. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for jumping on, Justin. I appreciate it. Drop some awesome, awesome knowledge. This is great. We could some awesome um, tips. Let's maybe we can. Yeah, we can. Uh, we can chat again. Maybe focus just on Instagram or landing pages or who who knows what else. Totally. Um, but I, again, I just want to thank you for for putting this podcast together. We talked earlier, but I think before we recorded that. Um, it's kind of the the idea of like a a rising tide kind of lifts everybody, mm -hmm. and I think just in general if if we can all just really f work together and, and and think hard about how we're marketing ourselves mm -hmm. and being professional that's going to start to change the idea and i'm sure this is an idea that has been going on for decades uh -huh. um because there's so many great djs that i mean you can go to like mobile beat conferences and those those are the guys that are talking about like getting what you're worth and um you know guys like joe bunn that that really focus on great branding great marketing um but unfortunately, I mean, people like us and you know Joe. I mean, they're very few and far between. Mm -hmm. um, especially as it gets easier and easier and cheaper to become a DJ, mm -hmm. um, it's it's not easy and cheap to become a great brand or you know a great brand mm -hmm. um, label or great marketer for DJing. Um, that's where the shift has got to happen. Is as we can all listen to resources like this. Um, want to mention business coaching for DJs, which is the Facebook page, um, to get on there. The Facebook um, group that you, yeah, uh, manage. yeah, yeah. Cause that's really about like, how can we just do things to, to, to be, to market ourselves better? Mm -hmm. Um, because that's, that's really going to be where the difference is because, you know, everyone, everyone can buy a controller and, you know, everyone can spend 20 bucks a month on a music subscription too. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, at this point I feel it's even easier and cheaper to get, you know, good quality music it's it's going to the difference maker is really going to be how how do we reach out to clients and how do we provide a great level of service mm -hmm. um, and the only way to do that is to see how other people are doing it and 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 try to share amongst each other right um, because then ultimately we can get to price points where that that's just what people charge i think mm -hmm. i feel that's the way photographers have have done it and right. and pretty much you know plumbers and movers it's like well uh -huh. this is just how much it costs because that's what everyone else is charging right right so, right or at least everyone else good is charging mm -hmm. yeah awesome awesome yeah so yeah that was dj justin kanoya awesome dj from san diego does a lot of big uh, uh does a lot of events for high-end clients high uh big name clients so uh, awesome tips from him so yeah thank you for checking it out next week we have another awesome dj dj lunatico uh coming in for the podcast so that is an awesome interview and i am definitely looking forward to it so definitely check it out and uh, subscribe if you are on youtube or on uh, itunes and uh, i look forward to talking to you next week tanner james dj tj with dj tj training in the peak period podcast